Hello everyone, welcome back to part 2. Um, today we're going to be continuing with uh, Scheme Up and making your Helix server. Now, last time I left off I told you how to put this into your server and now we're going to continue on to that. Now, when I'm going to teach you how to make this first and then probably in the next video or late in this video I'll tell you how to change your server's game mode to this in two different methods anyway let's continue so this folder right here it does not be is not going to be touched just leave that alone unless you know what you're doing but if you're a beginner you never have to touch this when you're going to be is going in here the first thing I'm going to talk about is how to change the game mode. Is I don't think let's say if you're making a Star Wars roleplay, you don't want it to appear in Half Life to roleplay game mode. So what you're going to do is you are going to rename this folder to whatever your game mode is going to be. So let's just put Star Wars RP. Plain and simple. So now I'm going to open it up and you're gonna come to this right here now you're gonna rename this the same as you named the folder so scholars RP so that should be that and next what you want to do is open this up as well and then don't touch anything else in here except this this is where the actual title is going to be so let's just put star Wars Roleplay. Oh, sorry. So now it's officially changed. Now this will appear in the Star Wars RP game mode. If there is no other servers in the game mode, you'll have it'll just make one for you. And you'll be the only server in that category. So now you just change the name. That's the first step. Congratulations. Now, now we're gonna go over everything in here. You're never gonna have to touch this or this or this so those can pretty much be ignored leave them though entities entities or are game mode specific items um, you won't have to care about that unless you find a find something that tells you to put it in there or if you're a developer making for another server if you're just a beginner you don't have to touch this game mode you don't have to touch that either this folder what it's basically doing is these two folders are basically in complex terms they're initializing your schema or your game mode from this so it's calling from this folder right here this is why you don't touch this one so you mess with it it, it won't get the data it needs and then it'll just come out as an error so plugins now these are also these are game mode specific plugins I will teach you how to Put these in here because there are a lot of nice add-ons. Sorry, nice plugins um, on GitHub and other places like that. Now these are not in the workshop, so you have to put them in here. I'll, that will be a separate video. But for our purposes, this is what you're going to need to do. The schema puts in your weapons, your items, your factions, your jobs, everything it goes in here. So this may look like a lot. Okay. The first thing I want to look at with you is HH schema. Oh, sorry. And so you, you know what you're going to do is right click and edit with Notepad++ if you have that, and this it's going to be necessary for this. So you want to open this up. So this includes a lot of basic data. You're not any everything down here. You're not going to need this. Is involving Half-Life 2 RP and code specific for that. So if you really want to. There's a lot of things you can delete out of here, but it doesn't really do anything once it's not being called. So, and if you don't want to, and it's going to cause a lot of errors with other stuff. So, honestly, in my opinion, just leave it. So, anyway, here's the schema name. Let me close these out real quick. So, you get the schema name, change that to whatever you want it to be. So, uh, Star Wars. Showers, schema author, just put your name, 
Not Costello, then it's description. A Star Wars role play. Sir. There you go. That's your basic server. Now, this will all come up when the server starts up because there's a menu. Also, there's, if I remember correctly, there is something in here as well. Yeah. So, um, also on top of that, with renaming your schema, if you want to go in languages, what I just did, go up here to English. You don't have to care about this, this unless you're a French server, which I don't, why you're on this video, she can't understand me. So um, this basically deals with all the messaging that is happening on your server. This is called from a lot of plugins and stuff. Um, what you're gonna re what you're gonna care about is this right here. This is gonna appear on the menu in your when in the menu when your server starts up. So we'll just put uh, uh, wars RP. I don't know. I, I don't know anything could go there but people are actually gonna see this so I would pick your words carefully so congratulations you just renamed your schema so it'll appear in the Star Wars RP menu and when they load into the server they will actually <laughs> they will see what it is so that's that so I'm gonna go with a basic rundown of all the folders in here attributes um, these are custom attributes that players can have besides strength endurance and stamina if you're if you have any sense of what those are if you played nut script or helix before then you should know what attributes are these are custom attributes classes classes or go in hand with factions so factions are like think about like the category in dark RP terms um, so when I want to become a Metro Police, then I join this faction. But let's say in Metro Police, I'm going to become an elite Metro Police. So instead of creating a faction, they just create a class, which I can switch to in that faction. So classes are derivatives of faction. Classes are derivatives of faction. So that's that. Derma. You're not really going to have to care about this. This is just... Um, text boxes showing on different classes and factions display on HUD but for your intents and purposes for a basic helix server that's advanced stuff you don't want to have to deal with that items this is all the bread and butter um, so these are different folders for weapons and stuff if you want stuff to appear in the sh and when you hit tab there's a store that you can use uh, your service currency for I'll teach you how to change that in another video then they would be going down here and just let me open up the handled radio and they would be down here to go in the in the store anyway they are useful items here like a radio to communicate there's locks here some of these are faction specific using flags to so that only certain factions can use them you're not going to worry about that there are also consumables that give you back health and armor see right here restore stamina so it restores your stamina so you can run longer and then it increases your health and also admits a sound so if you want to do a custom item then that would call off these consumables now if you're making a basic server this is where you're going to be working a lot it's a lot of work for this but um basically there's an inventory system helix and this inventory system holds weapons and stuff but for that to be happen you have to make the weapon folder like the, these files right here so i'll teach you how to make a custom one so just we're just gonna open this up so a weapon is basically all these um, you, this right here you're not gonna have to care about unless you only want a specific class to use it then only this class can have it so this is the item name this is what happens when you're gonna hover over it. this is what it's gonna show so this can be anything description this is when it's going to show up in the store and if you hover over it 
item model item model is what's going to show up in the inventory and on the ground when it's dropped so this can be the weapon model itself or you can put it to like a box or something it's really up to you item class this is this is what the weapon is to get this you go to the weapons tab and you go down to the weapon right click copy to kip, kip, ugh, clipboard and then you put it in weapon class item class sorry that's what that would be so really you you only really need these right here to well plus these to have a weapon this is I, I talked about this earlier weapon category um so basically when you're having an inventory system you don't want people to equip three saw rifles at the same time so what this does is if you have two weapons that are primaries then you can only equip one of them so but these don't have to be primary and secondary these can be whatever so i can put one two i don't know retard and then the, ne the other one could be retard and i can't have two retards equipped so that's what that is this can be you can put that to anything you want item width and height this is important for the inventory system basically it shows how because the inventory works on a block system so these are four blocks wide and two blocks tall so in total eight blocks um, usually it scales up with how big the weapon is so if you have a mini gun it would be pretty big if you had a pistol it would be pretty small in your inventory so that's how that is I had a minecon cam basically this shows what angle the weapon is in your inventory this isn't it isn't very important but if you're very into aesthetics then that's there for you so let's basically go over all the on how a weapon works uh, it's different for it's not that different between different weapons but I would just reference that when creating weapons permits um, permits are just well permits are permits to buy certain stuff from the store so and do certain stuff and then that uniforms um, basically what outfits do is when you equip them they change your model and if you de-equip them they on a, they go back to your original model so uh, yeah, you see right here yeah that's basically that base um, this is you don't need to really mess with this I don't really touch this myself but um, let's see here uh, armored clothing let's see yep this is this is uh basically gives you armor and stuff so um bags bags give you extra storage in your inventory so they open up separately if you ever play world of warcraft it works kind of like that but um yeah well also yeah um it works the same as there is the other it's just it just gives your armor and stuff now this is custom ammo well custom ammo sorry this is the ammo that appears in your inventory so you can like buy it and it would appear in your inventory um, this can be custom if you have like a different add-on then then you could make a custom ammo that would stay in the inventory you can also change the models let's say if you're doing a Warhammer roleplay server and the weapon state AR2 ammo but you don't want the AR2 ammo to look like AR2 ammo then you can just basically just come in here change the model and bam you'd be done or and change the name but it would basically be the same so that's a basic rundown of everything in here um, there's some things I did not know but that's fine there's always more things to learn um, there are different things in here that do different things um, like a request device uh, it's just you know they, they don't really do much but uh, a lot of things in here can be referenced to two of different items so let's see right here CID basically this when you get this it just pulls out some random numbers and applies that to your character's name so it would be unique to yours and the server saves that and let's go with the zip tie just, just to line round things off zip ties they restrict people and here's all the code for that um, if you're trying to make your own stuff then that can be that all right this can all be used by Metro Police Force and Overwatch. I, I don't know the full abbreviation name, but yeah, I don't play Half Life 2 RP that much. So, uh, yeah, you know, honestly, you can just get rid of this if you want everyone to use it, but in this code, only they can use it. So, that goes over the items. Um, 
if you have to put it in a different language as well, this is where you would put it, but uh, you're not really going to have to mainly deal with that if you're just an English speaker. Um, libs, don't mess with that. <laughs> That's not for basic people. Uh, also, you're not going to have to store. That's character data. You don't have to mess with that as well. Um, factions here. One of the other most important things to making your own Helix server. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, so when you're making a custom faction, there's um two things you need to know. Right. When you spawn into a Helix server, you have the opportunity to create a character. So when that goes down, you need a base faction, something that they can spawn in. So if you're making a military RP, this could be a recruit. Um, so let's say I want, I'm making a Star Wars roleplay and it's going to be Clone Wars, so I need a clone recruit. So how I would do that is I would come into here I would create a new text file okay also pretty important by the way um let me just put this back real quick uh, okay so let's say you have file name extensions off and oops. let's say you have file extension names off okay and this is an up so you, this is what you would say um basically you can just do reverse what I did. Um, basically, you click this over here, expand the ribbon, and this puts it up. You go to view, go over here, and check on file name extensions. The reason that's important is because you're going to have to change this file extension. So you'll run your rename, you're going to come here and kind of get rid of the text document as well. So you're going to go sh underscore clone, and then you can either do recruit, or you can back that up and just go recruit. Oh, I can't spell. Recruit. Uh, I'm going to do the underscore because I am extra. So then we're going to do that. It may ask you if this will change or corrupt it. Just click OK. It doesn't matter. So, bam, you create a Lua file. Congratulations. But it's empty. <laughs> so what you're going to have to do here, uh, let's, let's just go into the citizen file because we're going to be referencing it anyway. So the citizen file here, as we can see, this line would make, when it, when this says is default, that means you will spawn in. Like when you create a character, people will be able to see and create a character for this faction. Um, so faction name citizen. Um, that's just the name, description, self-explanatory, color. Color is what will appear. Because when you hit the tab menu, it shows the faction. And it has like a border. And it's kind of like a block kind of going across. So this is what color would be. Um, so it could be blue, black, whatever you put it. This right here, you don't need it. If you're not gonna have an ID system, I mean, you can just get rid of this. If you want them to have an ID, then this is where you have it. Um, though you could change the name of CID to Republic ID, and then you're gonna have to do all of this before you start up the server, because if they don't get an ID in the beginning of the character, they can't get one afterwards. So, um, for all intents and purposes, uh, I'm not going to be copying that. So, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to come here. Oh, yeah. Almost forgot. Faction, this right here, also very important. Um, this is important. If you're making faction classes, then this is what it would be referenced, the faction index. So, I'll ask you for this. Also, it's a unique faction ID, so the server can differentiate between all the different factions so this has to be unique also in all caps so let me just copy all this put it in our clone recruit uh, I don't want them to have IDs so we'll just get rid of that uh, so we'll just say we'll just put this to clone recruit 
I'm gonna leave the color because yeah. So I'll do clone recruit. Uh, a new arrival to the battalion. So bam, let's create a faction. Congratulations. So let's say you wanted to change the color. A little cheat that I made, well not I made, that I do is I go to a website called the Coding Beast, a TCB job generator to find it's basically a dark RP job maker, but it comes up with this line of glow color that you're gonna need. So um, I'll show you that. My AR like your Black Ops 2. Just give the white. All right. So I'll provide this link in the description for everyone that wants to. So um, you'll come up here, and you're not gonna have to care about anything else in here except this. So what you wanna do? It's kind of it's a little bit out there, but you see this? This is what we need but also gives you a visual representation of what you want. So I usually don't put anything all the way in this corner to be bright. I usually get a little mellow out so it's a little easier on the eyes. So let's say I wanted to make it the light blue. Uh, or uh, a nice teal, I guess. So I've created about right here. So it's lighter and easier on the eyes. So I'd come here, make do not, just control C this. You're gonna have to highlight it and then right click copy it. You can't control C it because it'll just change it automatically. So make sure to highlight it all and then just hit copy. Don't do control C because it doesn't work. So once you come in here, you'll come in here, bam. And then you want to save. And then there you go. When your server starts up, you'll have that class. So there you go, you create your own class. But what about these other ones? Well, you don't need them. So you don't need the citizen, so you can just, bam, there, problem solved. But also, as well, what you want to, in here, let's say you want to make a faction. Let's say you want to make, uh, uh, let's make a clone trooper. So sh underscore clone underscore trooper dot lua. So there you go. So what you want to do at this point is you want to open it up and you want to go back to clone recruit, just kind of just copy and paste, it doesn't matter. And just change the basic details, clone trooper, a standard, standard trooper serving, serving the GAR, um, you can change the color. So you don't want people to make a character right off the bat. So you just change this to false, and now people have to be transferred and whitelisted to this faction. All right, so then you come down here, as with everything else, you change this. There cannot be any spaces or anything. I'll have to be one word. So let's change it to Clone Trooper, and we'll come over here, get a color. Let's say I want to make this more blue. So uh, we'll come here, kind of drop this a bit. Uh, bam. And then we come here, right click, copy, plug this in here real quick. And then, bam, we have a clone trooper. You can just close that. And now you have a. So you can honestly just get rid of these, they don't matter. So now you have a starting unit and something that people can be transferred to. And after the recruit job is done, now there are code that it can automatically do this process, or you're gonna need if you just want to do the old fashioned way with staff, that's completely up to you. Uh, I personally only know the way with staff, so there's probably other code you could reference for that, but there you go. Um, let's go in here to classes. So I'm gonna give you a demonstration. So, um, let's say you want to make a clone heavy, okay? So, come in here. Let's do sh underscore clone underscore heavy dot lua. Now this is going to be in the clone troopers. And it doesn't matter. So you have that now. So what you want to do in here is let's just go into this one right here. Now this code is a little more complicated. <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway, here you go. So. Um, and class's default is a little bit different. So what's going to happen here is, 
um, you could the use for classes instead of switching the faction is that one it saves up on borders in the tab you so you have clone trooper clone heavy all appearing in there let's say you want I don't know alpha squad and bravo squad and all that appearing in there but you don't want clone heavy then that would be used for the class also when you're changing the health and armor then that would be a use if you want the heavy to have more health and a regular trooper then you can also put this in here so that's that um so how do we do this okay so let's just copy and paste this for all intents and purposes so let's come in here uh just let me look at this real quick uh, okay uh, uh, okay so what you want to do is come in here and you want to copy and paste class name change it to clone you could put trooper heavy you're just clone heavy but we're just gonna put the clone heavy now this is where the faction index comes into so you're gonna put in put in for me put in clone trooper in the next video i'll go over to change health armor a little bit more advanced topics and teach you the weapons um so right now default you want to leave that false so people can't just switch in between them and then class index so this would be just unique for you so we'll put cth or you can put clone trooper heavy clone heavy i'm just gonna put cth for clone trooper heavy as abbreviation so there you go you made a class uh we can just and boop so now you just have you have two factions and a class that in one of those factions people can be whitelisted to right now it doesn't really do much but yeah so that is the basics of fa of class creation faction creation and a name change and menu customization so um in the next video i'll go over items and and then going over how to add armor and health third i will go over sorry my voice i just woke up <laughs> in the next and then i will go over um and then i'll uh basic server stuff like content packs all that stuff from the previous video i assumed you knew all that but just for purposes i will go over that with you so because to make weapons you're gonna have to have a content pack and the weapons in the server or at least have the add-on supposed to be there so that when you put it in the server it's not just an error when you make the weapon and i will go over that in the next video for you we'll also make a basic consumable and stuff like that um if you have any questions you want me to answer stuff to go over and in following videos you can put that in the comments below thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one